Chapter Forty Five of the Ontario Reader's Third Book. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brianna Simmons. A Mad Tea Party by Lewis Carroll. There was a table set out under a tree in front of the house, and the March Hare and the Hatter were having tea on it. A dormouse was sitting between them fast asleep, and the other two were using it as a cushion, resting their elbows on it and talking over its head. Very uncomfortable for a dormouse, thought Alice. Only, as it's asleep, I suppose it doesn't mind. The table was a large one, but the three were all crowded together at one corner of it. No room, no room, they cried out when they saw Alice coming. There's plenty of room, said Alice indignantly, as she sat down in a large armchair at one end of the table. Your hair wants cutting, said the Hatter. He had been looking at Alice for some time with great curiosity, and this was his first speech. You should learn not to make personal remarks, said Alice with some severity. It is very rude. The Hatter opened his eyes very wide on hearing this, but all he said was, why is a raven like a writing desk? Come, we shall have some fun now, thought Alex. I'm glad they've begun asking riddles. I believe I can guess that, she added aloud. Do you mean that you think you can find out the answer to it? said the March Hare. Exactly so, said Alice. Then you should say what you mean, the March Hare went on. I do, Alice hastily replied. At least, at least I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you know. Not the same thing a bit, said the Hatter. Why, you might as well just say that I see what I eat is the same thing as I eat what I see. You might as well say, added the March Hare, that I like what I get is the same thing as I get what I like. You might as well say, added the Dormouse, who seemed to be ta talking in its sleep, that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It is the same thing with you, said the Hatter, and here the conversation dropped, and the party sat silent for a minute, while Alice thought over all she could remember about ravens and writing desks, which wasn't much. Have you guessed the riddle yet? the Hatter said, turning to Alice again. No, I give it up, Alice replied. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea, said the Hatter. Nor I, said the March Hare. Alice sighed wearily. I think you might do something better with the time, she said, than wasting it in asking riddles that have no answers. Suppose we change the subject, the March Hare interrupted, yawning. I'm getting tired of this. I vote the young lady tells us a story. I'm afraid I don't know one, said Alice, rather alarmed at the proposal. Then the Dormouse shall, they both cried. Wake up, Dormouse! And they pinched it on both sides at once. The Dormouse slowly opened its eyes. I wasn't asleep, it said in a hoarse, feeble voice. I heard every word you fellows were saying. Tell us a story, said the March Hare. Yes, please do, pleaded Alice. And be quick about it, added the Hatter, or you'll be asleep again before it's done. Once upon a time there were three little sisters, the Dormouse began in a great hurry, and their names were Elsie, Lacey, and Tilly, and they lived at the bottom of a well. What did they live on? said Alice, who always took a great interest in questions of eating and drinking. They lived on treacle, said the Dormouse, after thinking a minute or two. They couldn't have done that, you know, Alice gently remarked. They'd have been ill. So they were, said the Dormouse, very ill. Alice tried a little to fancy to herself what such an extraordinary way of living would be like, but it puzzled her too much, so she went on. But why did they live at the bottom of a well? Take some more tea, the March Hare said to Alice very earnestly. I've had nothing yet, Alice replied in an offending tone, so I can't take more. You mean you can't take less, said the Hatter. It's very easy to take more than nothing. Nobody asked your opinion, said Alice. Who's making personal remarks now? the Hatter asked triumphantly. Alice did not quite know what to say to this, so she helped herself to some tea and bread and butter, and then turned to the Dormouse and repeated her question. Why did they live at the bottom of a well? The Dormouse again took a minute or two to think about it, and then said, It was a treacle well. 
"'There's no such thing,' Alice was beginning very angrily, but the Hatter and the March Hare went, "'Shh, shh!' and the do Dormouse sulkily remarked, "'If you can't be civil, you'd better finish the story for yourself.' "'No, please go on,' Alice said very humbly. "'I won't interrupt again. I dare say there may be one.' "'One, indeed,' said the Dormouse indignantly. However, it consented to go on, and so these three little sisters were learning to draw, you know. What did they draw? said Alice, quite forgetting her promise. Treacle, said the Dormouse, without considering at all this time. I want a clean cup, interrupted the Hatter. Let's all move one place on. He moved as he spoke, and the Dormouse followed him. The March Hare moved into the Dormouse's place, and Alice, rather unwillingly, took the place of the March Hare. The Hatter was the only one who got any advantage from the change, and Alice was a good deal worse off than before, as the March Hare had just upset the milk jug in his pl into his plate. Alice did not wish to offend the Dormouse again, so she began very cautiously. But I don't understand. Where did they draw the treacle from? You can draw water out of a water well, said the hat Hatter, so I think you could draw treacle out of a treacle well, eh, stupid? But they were in the well, said Alice to the Dormouse, not choosing to notice this last remark. Of course they were, said the Dormouse, well in. This answer so confused poor Alice that she let the Dormouse go on for some time without interrupting it. They were learning to draw, the Dormouse went on, yawning and rubbing its eyes, for it was getting very sleepy. And they drew all manner of things, everything that begins with an M. Why with an M? said Alice. Why not? said the March Hare. Alice was silent. The Dormouse had closed its eyes by this time and was going off into a doze, but on being pinched by the Hatter it woke up again with a little shriek and went on. That begins with an M, such as mouse traps and the moon and memory and muchness. You know, you say things are much of a muchness. Did you ever see a thing as the drawing of a muchness? Really, now you ask me, said Alice, very much confused. I don't think— Then you shouldn't talk, said the Hatter. This piece of rudeness was more than Alice could bear. She got up in great disgust and walked off. The Dormouse fell asleep instantly, and neither of the others took the least notice of her going, though she looked back once or twice, half hoping they would call after her. The last time she saw them, they were trying to put the Dormouse into the teapot. Lewis Carroll the Adventures of Alice in Wonderland. End of chapter 45. Recording by Brianna Simmons. Carson City, Nevada. www.simmiespot.blogspot.com.